we're going to be talking about perpendicular bisectors. I like this one here, if there are infinite parallel universes, are there also infinite perpendicular universes? Now we're going to be using some things hopefully you've already seen, uh, things like gradient and midpoint and perpendicular lines. Let me remind you, just in case you forget, what does it mean to be perpendicular? Two things that are perpendicular are at 90 degrees to each other. So for example, if there's a line like this, well then something that's perpendicular to it could be that. Whoops, except I'm bad at drawing. So it should be like this, something like that. So it should be 90 degrees. Bisector, uh, what this means is it crosses, uh, how could I say, I could say maybe it crosses the midpoint. That might be a good way to say it, or it passes through the midpoint. Because it bisects. To bisect something means to you know, split something in half. So uh, let's just say we take some x and we take some y and I pick some two random points. Uh, let's see, I'll put my, maybe I'll draw something like this. I'll make it A here and I'll have maybe something called B over here. Now, how do I draw the perpendicular bisector between these two? That's going to be my goal, okay? My goal will be to draw, and maybe I'll just write it down here. I'll say the uh, perpendicular particular uh, bisector. So let me just try to do that. Sorry, I got to look down there. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to draw this perpendicular bisector between A and B. There's only one line then that I can do here. See, first I got to find the midpoint. So I'm going to try to find or draw the midpoint. Well, the point that's halfway between these two, let's see, it's, I don't know, looks like about there maybe? That would be the midpoint. I'll draw that mid point. All right. So that's the midpoint there. Now, where will my perpendicular bisector then be? Well, I need to make myself a line that crosses through that midpoint that's at 90 degrees to these two here. So what I do is I imagine some line going like this, and I draw something that's at 90 degrees to that. So if I had to guess, I'm keeping in mind I'm total guesstimating here, but something like, hold on, something like that maybe. I mean, it's not exact, right? But something like this. This would be my perpendicular bisector. So that would be it right there, this line right there. Okay? That would be the perpendicular bisector because if I took this right here, hopefully the angle between this from A to B and this thing should be 90 degrees. See, they should be perpendicular. So that might sound complicated, but we're for sure going to need this because we're, I'm trying to get you to where we can do Voronoi diagrams. For those, the key is to draw perpendicular bisectors. So I thought we would break it down and make sure we can do those. So how do we actually do it? Here's how we go. So I'm giving you like some, some helpful tips. How do you go through and find the perpendicular bisector? Uh, sorry, the, yeah, perpendicular bisector. We want the equation for that. So let's see if we can do this. So I'll just walk you through these steps. So first, find the gradient of a line uh, segment joining the two points. So here, let's just say I've got, let me just show you with an example here. So let's say I don't know, I've got an A here. I'll just draw them slightly different than I did before. Just for fun, I'll draw a B here. First, I need to know the gradient between A and B. In other words, if I made myself a line segment joining A and B, I'm going to try to do that now. That would be the line segment joining A and B. So I would try to find that gradient. That's my first step, okay? Now, how do I find a gradient? Do you remember that? Gradient is, I mean, we often call it M. I'll actually call it M1. It turns out that's going to be important. I'll call it M1. And I'll say M1 is going to be, uh, well, if you remember your gradient equation, it's delta Y over delta X. Or you could say it's, you know, Y2 minus Y1. That's the one on your formula booklet. Looks like that. So basically, you find your gradient here. All right, we're also going to need the midpoint, so we're going to need to know that. Maybe I'll put that in green here. And actually, you know what I should have done? I should have made this line here. Hold on a second. Try to take that line. I'm trying to make it blue, and I'll move it back to where it goes. See if that works. There we go. That, I've done that one. Let's do the midpoint. I'll color code them so they're easier to find. Uh, I could say the midpoint. We have an equation for that as well in the formula booklet. It says it's the average of the x's, so it's x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, because that's the x-coordinate, and it's the average of the y's. So it's like this. The order doesn't matter. You can do x2 plus x1. It doesn't matter. This is your midpoint. So that would allow you to find out now this right here, which is your midpoint. Okay? And then you've also found your gradient of your line segment. Well, now we need to find the gradient of the perpendicular line. 
Do you remember doing perpendicular lines before? To do those, those are, um, what color should I do that? I'm doing red. So gradient of a perpendicular line, I'm going to use this equation, m1, m2 equals negative 1. This is how we find a perpendicular line. I'm going to call it m2 here. Well, I will get, uh, I would divide by m1, so it would be minus 1 over m1. This is my equation I would use here. So see, I first found m1, so that was good. I know the coordinates of my midpoint. I'm going to need that later. Well, I need to know what my gradient of my perpendicular is. This allows me to know, basically, this tells me the gradient of that line that I'm going to be drawing. And then finally, well, we use this equation, y equals mx plus c, except we're going to use this m2 here we just found. We're going to use that and the midpoint. We're going to use those to find out what we need. Okay, so that's how we're going to do it. Using that, then we're going to be able to draw this perpendicular bisector. So something like, I don't know, maybe like that. This right here will be my perpendicular bisector. Okay, perpendicular bisector. So there are a few steps for sure. This is worth practicing. Now I wanted to try to show you, this is kind of neat. The shortest distance from a point to a line segment is perpendicular to it. What do I mean by that? Let me just show you this. Let me just try to draw myself a little x, y axis here. Something like that. All right, and let's just say I have some, uh, some line. I have some line hanging out, some line segment, and maybe it's uh, that one. And I want to try to find out, hey, I have some point. Maybe I'll just draw some random point like uh, here. Well, what's the shortest distance from this thing to that whole line? Because, see, I could guess. I could guess it's over here. Do you see I would have that distance there? I could guess it's over here. I would have that distance. Turns out the shortest distance is this one right here. That right there will be the shortest distance from here to here. Do you notice they're perpendicular? So we're just trying to say, in case you ever want to minimize a distance, it's actually perpendiculars are really important. That's just why. So let's go ahead and do a real example. I like this one here, name each angle, <laughs> Sally, Bob, Olivia. <laughs> yeah, it's not wrong. So we're given this situation where uh, I'm going to try to do it without drawing it, and then I'll try to do it and show you how to draw it. So we have point A has coordinates minus 1 and 6. Let me right away, before I do anything else, let me maybe label these. I'll call this one x1 and y1, just so it's easier to, to, to match them later. All right, this one here, B has coordinates x2, and I'll call this one here y2, just so I can keep everything straight here. They want us to find what's the gradient of line segment AB. This is the kind of question where they're really walking you through how to do this. So we're really just doing this first step. It's nice. They sort of walk you through like, hey, by the way, you might want to find that gradient. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do it in, uh, what color how do I use? Do I to use blue? Fine, I'll do it in blue. So gradient, how do I do that? I'll call it M1, bottom of my gradient. It'll be delta Y over delta X, which means it's going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. So I'll put in my numbers then. So I've got y2, which is 4, so 4 minus y1, which is 6, all out over, let's see, it's 3 minus minus 1. You've got to watch out. The minuses are important. So I end up with, let's see, 4 minus 6 is minus 2. 3 minus minus 1 is plus 4. So I have minus 2 over 4. That reduces, though, to minus 1 over 2 because they both divide by 2. So there we go. My gradient then is m1 equals minus 1 half. You could also say minus um, 0.5 if you wanted. You could do that on your calculator, of course. Just trying to show you how you could do it without. All right. Now we want the equation. This is the hard part. What's the equation of the perpendicular bisector of this thing? And we want it in this ugly form. But that's fine. We can totally do this. What's the next step to do? It's to find the midpoint. I'm going to do that then first. I'll do it in green even. Midpoint. Let's do that. Midpoint. Well, that's going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. You might think I'm showing you too much detail. Yes, I'm doing that so it, you know, so you can follow along. Uh, midpoint. So how do I do that? Well, it's going to be x1. Let's see. So that'll be minus 1 plus 3, all that over 2, comma. And let's see. It'll be x, x1 plus x2. So 6 plus 4 over 2. What does that give me? Let's see. So the midpoint then must be, what's minus 1 plus 3? That's 3 minus 1. That's just 2. So 2 over 2. And this one here is 6 plus 4, which is 10. 10 over 2. 
So finally, I have the midpoint is, let's see, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So now I have the midpoint, that's going to be important. Okay, I have the midpoint. This is an x value of the midpoint, this is the y value of the midpoint. Alright, I'm going to need that later. What do I do now? I find the gradient of the perpendicular line. I'll do this maybe in black uh, this time. I'll explain why later. So um, now I want the gradient of the perpendicular line. Okay, so I want something perpendicular to this AB. Gradient of the perpendicular uh, to AB. How do I do that? I use this equation, m1, m2 equals minus 1. This is not in your formula booklet, so you should have this one memorized. Or at least some people just remember, I just do the negative reciprocal, which means I flip my gradient here, but I have to flip it, and I also change the sign. So in this case right here, I can say that m2 will be, let's see, I flip it, which will make it... Uh, minus 2 over 1, and then I change the sign, which makes it plus 2 over 1. If you're not sure, you can always do it. Just put in minus 1 over 2. Watch, you can do it like this. Minus 1 over 2 times m2 equals minus 1. To get m2 by itself, you have to multiply by 2, so the 2 comes up top. Divide by 1. Hey, look at that. So I'm just trying to show you end up with that. So m2 then equals just 2. This is going to be important. Because now I have my gradient of my perpendicular. That's good, because now all I have to do is do this right here. Use your equation here. Use this y equals m2x plus c, and the midpoint. So let me do that final step now. That means I'm going to say, all right, now I know that y equals m2x plus c. This is the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c, except I'm going to use these values now that I know. I'm going to use my midpoint. Okay, So I'm going to use that I know that at x equals 1, I know that y equals 5. I know that from my midpoint here, okay? So I'm going to put those in. So I'm going to put in a 5 here, I'm going to put in a 1 for x, and I'm going to put in um, this value right here. I know that m2 is going to be 2, so that one's going to come in and go here. What does that mean? That means I end up with, let's see, 5 equals m2, which is 2, times x, which is 1, plus c. 2 times 1 is just 2, so I've got 5 equals 2 plus c. Can you get the answer for c then? Well, c is just 5 minus 2, which is 3. So finally then, I could say my equation goes y equals, let's see, it's m2, which is 2x plus c, which is 3. You might think you're done. right? This is the equation of the perpendicular bisector. The problem is, it's not in this form. Isn't that kind of a jerk thing to do? So this one right here, this is correct, but in the wrong form. So what do I need to do? Well, I just need to move everything over. So maybe I'll move my y over. So I'll say, fine then, um, 2x, I'll move my y over, it becomes a minus y, plus 3, and that whole thing equals 0. So there's my final answer. Whew, it's a little bit ugly, and I tried to make it really, really hard by forcing this other form. But that's actually how we do it. Now, we could have done it. You know, we could actually try to draw it, I guess. I could try to do that right here. So let me just attempt to do that. Uh, I don't really have much space here. Um, I guess I could try it over here. So I've got uh, these coordinates right here. Let's just see. I'll just try to do it really, really quick. So I got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1. Two, three, four, five, six, something like that. Let's just attempt to see if we can do it. So minus one and six, that'd be whoop, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so it'd be something like here would be A. B would be something like three, four. Let's see, so one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, something like this. This would be B. Does it make sense? Then let's look at this this thing here. What this graph tells me is that I should have a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of 3. Let's see if that works. That means I would find the midpoint. Oh, that's at 1, 5. I can also draw that. Let me do that, actually. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This here should be the midpoint. Good news. Kind of looks like a midpoint, doesn't it? So that is the midpoint there. That's good. And my graph should look like, let's see, let me try to do it here. It means every one unit I go to the right, I go up by two, so two, two, like this. It means one I go to the left, I go down by two. And look at that, it actually seems to work. So even my really crappy drawing like this kind of shows it. Let me just try to go something like that. This, here's my perpendicular bisector here. 
So it seems to have worked. That's good. Now, why should you care? Well, we're going to care about this a lot for geometry and map reading. If you're doing topographical maps, this is so cool, actually. If you look at a what's called a topo map, so that means like maybe you have like some hill. So maybe it goes like this, and you'll notice that maybe then they draw something like this right here, and they draw something like this and like this. What these are? These are these are places where they're equal height. So maybe this is like altitude here. Well, it turns out uh, you can tell uh, the direction, like the best directions of travel, because it turns out the best way to go, for example, would be something that's perpendicular to some of these lines. Now, it depends which way you go, but you can tell something about steepness by how close they are together. So if this is a top view of a mountain, this is the top of the mountain here. And then at least steep way to go would be to go here, because it's the biggest space between these. So there's some really cool things like that. But also Voronoi diagrams, which I've got some videos coming up on that. This is the key to doing it. You can't do a Voronoi diagram diagram without knowing how to do this. So this skill is really important. If nothing else, then it's for your exam.